episode four. four. Mm, how would you describe or tell me about like a basic structure or template for young hockey players? Yeah. In terms of uh, program design during off season and during the in season. Good question. Okay, so um, we've had we've had hockey players come here for a long, long time. Um, most of the players that we do work with are more amateur and like semi-pro. They're not at the highest level mm -hmm. of hockey players, so they're more of like in the development phase as opposed to at the top of their game. Um, so, and mostly their kids are between the ages of literally twelve and 16 are probably the majority of kids we start with or have. We do have many clients that are a little more advanced as well, so just prefacing that. So we'll give you the situation of like a 12, of a, of a kid that's in grade 12, or grade 12, sorry, a 12 year old that we have now that's coming for training. Mm -hmm. you, uh, we honestly don't treat him any differently than a 12 year old that comes in for training that just wants to be stronger as well. Um, because the kid is very, doesn't know how to do the movements really well, doesn't have good control of his limbs as he's going through puberty. He's growing, or he has grown quite a bit in the past two months, three months, four months, even last year. So he needs to learn how to move in that new frame. Um, and you can tell when you watch him train is that he is learning how to do stuff all the time and he's learning how to do it. Um, so the training is very structural based. It's not based around energy system development because he does lots of that with his own hockey. Um, it's based around making the kid stronger and developing the movements correctly so that when he gets older and is able to even get even stronger, he knows how to do it perfectly. So he's obviously safer for training and hopefully safer for hockey. Um, then we have kids that just start training when they're like 18. Um, and again, they're, we don't treat them that much differently than the 12 year old because if they just start training when they're 18 then they're complete beginners anyway mm -hmm. the one thing that hockey players have when they do come in if they are good hockey players is they have very strong legs to begin with they have very strong legs mm -hmm. um, they generally have a very good work capacity um, in in a multitude of modalities probably the worst would be running mm -hmm. um, but they're they're generally very good work capacity so with that being said, like a general idea for these kids, um, let's, so let's say like they start in May at the classic time, the kids start in May because their hockey season's generally over in April. So they start in May. It's basically six weeks. We give them about six to eight weeks and the focus is on rebuilding their muscle mass that they would have lost mm -hmm. throughout the year and working on any major movement issues. Mm -hmm. um, and very little in terms of like power or speed development mm -hmm. or like energy system development it's mostly built based around movement and structure mm -hmm. that's the base of the first two uh, months and then as the program goes along and they've they've become accustomed uh, to the loading of squatting deadlifting um, lunging and they haven't had any issues any setbacks with it and they are progressing then we begin to add in some more speed work and some more like jumping and throwing drills mm -hmm. um, to add on top of that new developed mass and strength they have to try to just make them a little bit faster, more explosive. Mm -hmm. um, and then as we get even farther into it, as we start adding the power and speed in, say in month three, that being July, um, we start adding in more uh, actual energy system work, like uh, five, 10, 15 second sprints mm -hmm. in recovery. Mm -hmm. And then as we get further towards the end of the year, whether they're they're here until middle of August or the middle of September. Um, we usually just increase the aerobic uh, training for them as they get closer to their end of the season because they generally have to go into a training camp um, and it is usually training camps are quite, uh, quite a lot of work. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that they are fit enough to maintain uh, or to be able to perform at the camps. And you want to make sure that they are fit enough to maintain the camp mm -hmm. so that they can recover from day to day and feel healthy. Mm -hmm. So again, just breaking it down, it's much more about structure, movement, and muscle for the first two months. Then it's more about taking that, making it smaller, adding in speed and some really short alactic power intervals, mm -hmm. and then making that smaller, and then adding in longer aerobic intervals and just more aerobic work in general mm -hmm. to 
just finish them off mm -hmm. and have them go to a camp and feel confident. And do they practice their hockey throughout the summer? They generally do. Mm -hmm. They generally practice their hockey throughout the summer, which is why we don't generally have a really high amount of conditioning work throughout the year, throughout the summer, because they generally do skate two mm -hmm. to three times per week mm -hmm. throughout the summer. So that, that provides a pretty mm -hmm. darn good um, maintenance mm -hmm. of their abilities. And do they, with regards to work capacity and whatnot. Do they train, like uh, train the work, some maintenance conditioning throughout the in-season? The good ones do. Mm -hmm. The people that are dedicated to it, they do, mm -hmm. and they want to know what to do. Mm -hmm. um, and we've had many, we have many clients where, um, where they do train throughout the year, and they leave us in September, mm -hmm. they come back in May, mm -hmm. and they're pretty much where they left off. Mm -hmm. And we have kids that, and that, that's people that follow what we want them to do, and then we have kids that either do nothing, or follow their team training, mm -hmm. and they leave us in September, and they come back um, a shadow of their former mm -hmm. self. Mm -hmm. So now we're wasting, we're wasting a month, getting them back to where yeah. they were. Yeah. Whereas if they were dedicated mm -hmm. um, and had and followed instructions mm -hmm. and really wanted mm -hmm. to be their best, they would they yeah. would come back and be prepared for the May yeah. start time and then they would finish off even higher. Yeah. Versus you're wasting one month getting them back to where they need to be. Yeah. And it's just too bad that the training programs for the large majority of the hockey players or most athletes in general um, it's just written down on a piece of paper and it's like, here you go, do it. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no, there's nothing to do with loading, proper loading, proper form, proper, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. proper intensity, the right selection of movements, mm -hmm. the right design of the program. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's just too bad. Yeah. And then we get, to, we get to see that mm -hmm. from clients that do come in. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that's that. Nice. Perfect.